But yes, read it if you can because it's really freaking good and I love it so much. See ya, say words. Ugh. Read this book and then like, here's my phone number, text me, tell me what you thought of it because no one I know will read this freaking book. Don't tell anyone, it's a secret, okay? It's a secret until you watch the video and then it's not. Hi, I'm Sam. There's quite literally no one asking me to do this, but I have a lot of opinions about the books that I've read so far this year, and I want to tell you about them. So today I'm going to tell you about the top five best books I've read so far this year. So how do these books make the cut? These are the books that blew my mind, okay? Blew my mind. They rearranged my chromosomes. These books set the curve, so to speak. Which is to say that after I finished them, I had to go back and change some of the ratings of other books that I had read and rated highly because I was like, oh, this is actually a five star. Those books that I thought were five stars, those are like not even in the same galaxy of amazingness, you know? So um, those, are the, those are the stipulations. That's how these books made the cut. It was pretty tough for me to choose just five, but I was determined. So. These are the five best books I've read this year so far. Okay, so the first book, I'm kind of cheating with this first one because I'm like recommending the whole series, but the first book that I'm recommending is Killing Stalking by Kugi. So this was originally published as a webtoon in Legend Comics and it has since gotten a physical release. So it's a Korean horror manhwa that has garnered some controversy because it is pretty extreme horror, but some people misconstrue it and actually think that it's like a dark romance when it's really, that's really not what it is. So the story opens with one of our main characters, Yoonbum, who is obsessed with this boy or this man now who he has known since they went to school together. So he has a really big crush on this guy and he has been stalking him. Every day when his crush goes to work or leaves, leaves his home, he tries to break in, trying all these different codes to try to break into his apartment. And one day he finally is successful and is able to break into his crush's apartment. When he gets inside, he actually ends up finding a woman who is tied up and badly beaten in the basement. So obviously his crush isn't who he thought he was. But before he can free the woman and escape, his crush Sangwoo appears behind him and bars him from ever leaving. So this is very much a horror. The title says it all. There's killing and there's stalking and so much more. This series is obviously very extreme. It depicts a lot of graphic violence. So it won't be for everyone, but I was so riveted to the story from just the first chapter. When I started the series, I literally finished it in a single day. And I'm really looking forward to the deluxe editions that are getting released. I already pre-ordered that. I really love the main character, Sangwoo, who's more of the antagonist. And then uh, Yoon Bum, who is more of the protagonist, but they're, I mean, Yoon Bum is obviously like a creepy stalker too. So he's not like this perfect angel of a, of a character. I really like how the story explores both of their psyches and their backgrounds and their trauma. I also really like the tenuousness of their relationship. And as a reader, I almost sort of got like whiplash each time the relationship would like brutally shift. Because at the end of the day, Sang Woo has kidnapped and imprisoned Yoon Bum. It's not a cute, cutesy romance. It is really messed up. Sang Woo is written so, so, so well. There were scenes where he's manipulating and gaslighting Yoon Bum. But even like as the reader, I felt like there were times where I found myself almost believing him. So then when he did show his true colors again and you know he's obviously like an abuser and he kills people and he you know he's not a good person so I was pretty fascinated by the effect that he had on me as a reader because he was very convincing like I felt like I could understand how Yoon Bum would believe him in some instances because I even did sometimes even if the art were bad the story would still on its own be phenomenal but the fact that the story is so good and then the art is also so freaking good. They just compound on each other and it's just so, so amazing. It's so good. It's it's one of the best manhwa or manga series I think I've ever read. It's just so good. The art is so good. The story is so good. And the art really serves to elevate the story. So it really helps with the tension and the character development and like understanding how the characters are feeling. So it just, it really is, it's, 
it's awesome. So obviously, as I said, this is really extreme. So definitely check all content warnings before proceeding with this, but definitely read this one if you can. And in all my videos, I usually include a link to a website called doesthedogdie.com where you can check trigger warnings for different forms of media, like different stories, books, movies, TV shows, etc. And they'll give you like content warnings, spoiler free. So if there's like specific things like animal abuse or sexual assault that you just really don't want to read about, I would definitely use that website for anything that you're wanting to read moving forward. But yes, read it if you can because it's really freaking good and I love it so much. Okay, next is a book that I have talked about extensively, but I will use any excuse to talk about it again. So that is Threats by Amelia Gray. This book rocked my world. This like rearranged my chromosomes. It like changed my perceptions of what I thought I was as a reader. And like, th I feel like this book has now set the tone for my taste. This has sort of like reset my taste because I just didn't know that there were books like this that existed. So, I mean, that's like, sounds like really high praise, but I mean, just like, look at how much I annotated and like, this is all stuff. I like have a whole video specifically just about this book. So all of these are like parts that I wanted to talk about in the video. And then all of these different colors mean different things. And then I have a full annotated flip through at the end of that video. If you're interested in that, this book, the synopsis is like kind of like, here, I'll just read you the synopsis because it's kind of misleading, I think. So it says David's wife is dead. At least he thinks she's dead but he can't figure out what killed her or why she had to die. And his efforts to sort out what's happened have been interrupted by his discovery of a series of elaborate and escalating threats hidden in strange places around his home. One buried in the sugar bag, another carved into the side of his television. These disturbing threats may be the best clues to his wife's death. Detective Chico is also on the case and is intent on asking David questions he doesn't know the answers to and introducing him to people who don't appear to have David's or his wife's best interests in mind. With no one to trust, David is forced to rely on his own memories and faculties, but they too are proving unreliable. I knew this was like sort of horror-esque, but I thought it, it, this kind of reads more like it's going to be a thriller, you know, like, okay, his wife died. He has to figure out what happened to her, who done it, mystery, you know, there's going to be twists and turns, but that is absolutely not what this is. This is less about solving the mystery of David's wife's death and more about a really intimate look into David's psyche and behavior following the death of Franny sort of the fallout of her death and like how that affects him. So if you're looking for a, you know, a pretty standard thriller of like, yep, wife is dead, who did it? I want to figure out who did it. And then like, you want a satisfying ending where, you know, you figure out who does it at the end. That is not this. This is for people who like surrealism. If you like absurdist humor, there's a lot. This is just like really funny and absurd and just weird and I just loved it so much. This just rocked my world and ever since reading this I've been trying to find more writers like this. Like uh, since reading this I found Miranda July who I'm actually going to be talking about you know later in this video. Yeah if you have any other like absurdist like writing style authors to recommend I would, would love to read more because this just rocked my world. So since it is so like absurdist and weird and surreal and like abstract, I don't think it's going to be enjoyed by everyone. And I think on Goodreads, it only has like a three star rating. And I think that is because people who pick this up maybe were expecting a more standard thriller or more standard horror. But this is like, this is a lot more literary. I think go into this if you're just like wanting something that you just like want to, you want to be taken on a weird ride, you know, and you're just like open to anything like Go into this with a very open mind. So if you're even a little bit curious, I'd give it a try, especially, like I said, if you enjoy the writing of Miranda July, I'd highly recommend this. Love, love this book so much. Okay, so speaking of Miranda July, as I sort of alluded to when I was talking about the last book, the next book that I read that I still, I don't have a physical copy yet, but I am on the hunt. And that book is The First Bad Man by Miranda July. Okay, so the synopsis for this. Cheryl is a 40 something year old woman who leads an eccentrically ordered life that includes working at a nonprofit women's self-defense program and pining after her coworker, Philip, who wants her blessing before consummating his love with an underage girl. She also has a karmic connection to a child she refers to as Kubelko Bondi, whose spirit continually appears to her and other people's babies that she meets. But the plot of this story really takes off once Cheryl is forced to take in her boss's 20-year-old daughter, Clee, who is so incensed by how pathetic and sad Cheryl is that she begins to physically assault her. But it is through this that Cheryl finally learns to fight back. So this again, so, so, so strange and absurd 
and funny. So I listened to this on audiobook and this is narrated by the author. And I think the book on its own is hilarious. There were like many times where I laughed out loud, but having it narrated by the author, I think just like increased the hilarity even more because the way she read it and the way she delivered it was just like so funny. I do plan to buy a physical copy of this. Obviously it's one of the best things I've read so far this year. So I do plan to buy a physical copy of this. I want to reread it and annotate it like I did with Threats because this is just so funny and weird. And I feel like I found like my brand of like, this is what I want to read. You know, these are the books I really, really enjoy and that just like really get to the core. They, they just touch my soul in a weird way and tickle my brain, you know? I really can't wait to read more Miranda July. I actually have, I actually found her short story collection, No One Belongs Here More Than You. Ooh, is that out of focus? You bet your bottom dollar. I actually found her short story collection. Sam, say words. Ugh. I actually found her short story collection, No One Belongs Here More Than You, while I was out shopping for a vlog I was uh, shooting. So, um,. Yes, excited to read this. I am gonna read this in August. That's a little sneak peek of my August TBR video. Don't tell anyone, it's a secret, okay? It's a secret until you watch the video and then it's not. So definitely read this if you like Amelia Gray and then vice versa. If you like Miranda July, please read Threats. I'm trying to get like, like every person I meet, every stranger on the street, I'm like, hello, have you heard of Amelia Gray? If not, you need to read this book. Read this book and then like, here's my phone number, text me, tell me what you thought of it because no one I know will read this freaking book. I have no one to talk about, about this book, okay? No one has read this and I need to talk to people about it, okay? Please talk to me about this book, please. Okay, that was dramatic, but seriously read it. And if you, even if you don't like it, even if you don't like it, just tell me why. And I wanna talk to someone about it because it's so good. Okay, calm down, Sam, calm down. Next, we're gonna talk about Come Closer by Sarah Gran. This is a horror novella, or I guess, is it a novella? I think it's like a little baby novel, a little baby novel. It's short. This was really good. I got it from the library, so that's why I don't have a physical copy, but I will also be getting a physical copy of this. Okay, synopsis. Our main character, Amanda, is a successful architect with a loving marriage and home, but her life starts to unravel throughout the course of this novel. She begins to hear a strange tapping noise in her home. Her personality begins to shift slightly, her behavior grows erratic and she feels like she's losing control of her own life and behavior. So this is a very hyped book. Like every horror booktuber I watch pretty much is like, yeah, Come Closer by Sarah Grant is, is a banger. Like five out of five every time. So obviously anytime you go into a book like that, I'm like, ah, oh, there's like all this pressure and I feel like you get it so hyped up in your mind and then it like never lives up to that. But this lived up to that for sure. You're questioning the whole time, is it mental illness or is it demonic possession? And then as the story progresses, it becomes clear which of the two it actually is. So yes, definitely lives up to the hype. I really, really enjoyed this. You know, even if you're not a horror fan, even if you're like a little little chicken, you know, you don't even like to, you like to sleep at the nightlight. You don't like to watch scary movies. You're afraid of the dark. You think there's a monster in your closet. I think you could still read this because it is more so like psychological and it really wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that scary. And again, it's also really short. So I think, you know, you'll be able to tell within the first couple chapters, like if you like the writing style, but then also like if it's creeping you out too much, which I don't, I really don't think it will. I think this is a really great book for people who want to dip their toe a little bit more into horror. Just do it. It's really good. Read this and then tell me if you like it. Especially if you're like a little baby chicken, okay? If you're a little baby chicken who doesn't normally like horror and then you're like, Sam said I should read this if I want to get into horror and then you like it, tell me. Or if you read it and you're like horrified and scarred for the rest of your life, also please tell me so that I can apologize. But I really don't think you will be. I think you'll be fine. I think you'll be fine. And this might be like the turning point in your life when you become like a horror fiend, you know? And then who knows? Years from now, you could be starting your own YouTube channel, ranting about all the horror shit you love, okay? This could be the start of something beautiful. Lastly, number five. And again, these aren't in any, I didn't say this, but th these aren't ranked or anything. I don't think they were ranked. Were they ranked, Sam? No, no, they weren't ranked. But just like the fifth thing I'll be talking about is actually one that my boyfriend Impulse bought because he saw it online. He saw the cover, he read the synopsis and he was like, I think Sam would like this. And he was right because it quickly skyrocketed to the best things I've read so far this year. So that is Nijigahara Holograph by Inio Asano. So Inio Asano is a really like prolific mangaka. He writes a lot of adult, I wouldn't say horror, but like, yeah, like a lot of horrific things happen, 
but his stuff is more like like when I think of horror manga I think of like Junji Ito where you have like images that are drawn with the express purpose of scaring you whereas Inio Asano kind of like explores like just the horrors of humanity and like everyday life you know there's there's not really any like monsters under the bed here it's just like oh here's some awful people or like these complex individuals who are living out their lives and are being haunted by the demons of their past kind of thing. But it's still really disturbing, really, you know, graphic violence happening in this synopsis, Sam. What is this book about? So butterflies ominously proliferate as children whisper rumors of a mysterious creature lurking in the tunnel behind the school. To appease its wrath, they decide to offer it a sacrifice, a human one. But this is only the beginning of Nijigahara Holograph, which takes place in two separate timelines and involves the suicidal Amahiko, Kota, the love-struck bully, their teacher, Miss Sakaki, whose heavily bandaged face remains a mystery, and many more brothers, sisters, parents, co-workers, teachers, aggressors, and victims who are all inextricably linked to one another. Ten years later, all will have to face what they've done or suffered through, and maybe the end of the world. So from the very opening page, I knew that this was going to be a treat. We just got a lot of weird imagery, like a decapitated animal, like butter, half butterfly wings, a boy falling from a building, a dark hallway, some cryptic writing, and then two screaming babies. So that's the opener. So I literally just like, when my boyfriend showed me this, he was like, yeah, I bought this for you. And I was like, oh, cool. And I just like flipped it open to kind of like, look but then this just like sucked me in so much i legitimately opened it and read it cover to cover in that single sitting i like sat down and i just kept flipping and he's like wait are you gonna read it right now and i was like i have to i've been called to to read this right now and i must read it right now so that's what i did i feel like the story just latched onto me and didn't let go and it still hasn't let go after i finished it i closed the book and like sat with my head in my hands for a little bit and just like stared into the thousand yard stare and my boyfriend was like oh shit, was it that bad and i was like no the opposite this like rearranged my freaking chromosomes just like blew my mind. Like it blew my mind so much that I actually felt like a physical headache kind of coming on after I finished this. One, because I was kind of confused about how it ended because it just was like the ending was not what I expected. But then I like flipped back and like looked through things. And then I was like, oh my God, that actually makes sense. But like my mind is just like so effing blown. Like how could someone write this? Like, is Inio Asano okay? And the answer is no. So yeah, then I just sat in like complete silence for like 10 minutes contemplating my life. I will say if you are a fan of David Lynch, you would probably like this book because this book flips back and forth between multiple timelines and multiple perspectives. So it is told in a really fragmented way. But then that's why like at the end when it like all comes together, I was just like, no fucking way. Just, just mind blowing. Obviously, you know, definitely check trigger warnings for this one. Basically anything I read, Unfortunately, sorry, probably check trigger warnings because I do tend to enjoy the more unsavory sides of literature. That's just what I like. Definitely read this one if you can. I would love to discuss this one with anyone who's read it. Did you like it? I want to read more Inio Asano. So what should I read next if you've read his stuff and you also liked this? What should I read next? So that is all the best books I've read this year so far. I will definitely be doing you know, best books of 2022 at the end of the year, but I'm pretty sure that these are going to be, these are still going to be on the list. It'd be pretty cool if they weren't, because that means I've read like other like super mega bangers who like blew these out of the water somehow, which seems impossible at this time, but stranger things have happened. So thank you for watching. If you want to um, subscribe, if you want to, it'd be cool. That'd be really cool. I'd love to have you. Tell me about weird stuff you're reading or have read or want to read. Watch my other videos if you want. Bye!